You know, there's nothing like cracking that, that cellophane and pulling that record out. It just smells great. Welcome to Buzz Mayhem Hour. Non-stop hardcore energy. I love the show, guys. You're awesome. Yeah. Unlike any other. With your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Man, this stuff rocks. Hi, this is Mark Brighty from Jag Panzer, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Hour, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Hey everybody, welcome to Bods Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. the Bod Father. And as always, I'm bringing you guys and gals awesome interviews. Today, it's an honor and a huge privilege to welcome guitarist Mark Brady of Jag Panzer. And Jag Panzer has released their new concept album entitled The Hallowed via Atomic Fire Records. And you watch your guys it goes onward. We toil and edge of a knife so we got mark on here to talk about all this good stuff so how you doing mark and welcome to the podcast my friend i'm doing good thank you for having me glad to be here when you think back and you realize this band has been doing this for over geez now what four decades Mm -hmm. i mean did you think that it would last this long or, or did you have any expectations when you came into this band of like, you know, how, how long of a, of a career this would be possibly. Well, I I had a little bit of a hint because I I known uh, our singer, Harry and bass player, John, since I was six years old. Hmm. And so I I knew by the time I was about nine, I knew that would be a lifelong friendship. Yeah. So that that was a little, a little bit of a clue. I didn't realize it was going to be a heavy metal band friendship, but yeah, we we all were so close. You know, within a couple of years, I, I knew that we'd be friends for life. How excited are you guys to finally have this concept album, The Hallowed, out and just be done with it? And 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 did it turn out <laughs> exactly the way you guys wanted to? Because I know a lot of these bands, you know, they're they're still working on stuff that's been in the pocket since COVID and everything. But how good does it feel to get this out? And did it turn out exactly the way you all wanted it to? Yeah, we actually finished it in uh, June 2022. I mean, we delivered the Masters. So, yeah, we've been, you know, it, waiting for it to come out sucks. You know, you're like, man, when's it going to come out? Come on, you're yeah. not allowed to play it for anybody. You can't really talk about it. And so, yeah, it was driving us all crazy. So we're we're very excited now that it's finally out. And, uh, yeah, it came out the way we wanted it. This is the first record we have ever done without a record company. So we finished the record before we signed with Atomic Fire. And yeah, that was, uh, that was a different way to do a record. And uh, it was cool. I liked it. How difficult was that for you guys to be sitting there going, look, we've got this album. We can't do nothing with it. Can't even start writing on anything else because we've got to get this album out to say like, what do we do? <laughs> it had to be freaking frustrating, man, as hell. Yeah, it, it was because, you know, it was, we signed in October. So, you know, it was like months <laughs> yeah. before we signed and anything came out. But, you know, it's worth it now. Atomic Fire has done an amazing job of promotion. So I, I do understand why they needed that time frame. The band now has 11 studio albums out. How special is it to have these albums in the Jag Panzer Music Library and still, Mark, be able to carry on with your guys' music, man? Uh, it's, it, it pleases me. I, I couldn't even describe it. And what pleases me the most is, is almost all of them are still in print. So they're still being released. Atomic Fire is coming out with three of them. Um, we have a German label came out with one of the albums and other German labels coming out with another one coming up. So that's, uh, that makes me real happy. It, you know, just tells me there's still some interest in, in music we did many years ago. And still like going overseas and everything like that, going worldwide, man, that, that, that speaks volume for a band that's been around as long as you guys have. Yeah. We're heading out in a couple of weeks. We're playing, you know, Vakken, the, the giant, festival everybody wants to play and headbangers open air and alcatraz and a bunch of headlining dates so yeah it, it's cool it, it really is a dream come true when i was you know 13 and 14 playing air guitar with the tennis racket i mean this was what i dreamed of doing so it's really cool 
I always say the the twenty day concert in walking because walking's like four days. I think I think it's like a week long. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I think it's a week long. Man, alive! It's long, long festival. But a lot of great bands on that on that bill too. Yeah, yeah. Iron Maiden's playing this year, and yeah, that's gonna be cool. Do you feel the band should have more albums out if if they didn't take a hiatus or have a lineup changes and everything? Do you think there should be more albums possibly, or you guys just right on par? Yeah, I think we're on par. I mean, I'm a I'm a slow songwriter, so it's really I, I have to take all the blame for this. I, uh, I I have an idea in my head first of what a song is supposed to sound like, and really the emotions it's supposed to bring forward, and I will throw away every riff until I, I get what I want in my head. And that takes a long time. And so, yeah, it's, it's all on me. I'm the, I'm the slow part of that equation. With, with all these albums that you have out right now, and I know this is a crazy question to even think about, but do you feel like the band has finally hit its stride musically? Because I know some bands say that they, they've not hit their stride until like 10, 11 albums into their career. So oh, is that the same I, with you all? Yeah, I totally agree with that because, you know, the, the early records, you have that useful, youthful enthusiasm <laughs> and, you know, it's just really fun just to get a record out mm -hmm. and then, and then you start refining and yeah, it, it does take 10 or 11 albums till you really find your own sound and, and get, get really comfortable and, and sort of ignore outside influences. I mean, you know, cause you always got people throwing, you know, you should do metal like this or you should do this. And yeah, I, I think we've hit the stride now where we can, uh, we can get our own sound without, uh, without any outside influences. So when this band did take that high, to smart, do you, do you think they, that you guys just needed to recharge just to go in and say, Hey, look, let's just, you know, recharge everything, come back and see what we're standing at. Yeah, I needed live gigs to restart because I, I go to a gig at least once a week and uh, I just love it. And that's what influences me to write. It just charges me up seeing another band live. So COVID, I, I know other musicians, you know, wrote albums during COVID and man, I wish I could have done that. I just, I couldn't do it. I mean, I could have sat down with a guitar and wrote some riffs, but it, it wouldn't have been authentic. Well, here's another thing, and I've been saying this since day one of, of, of you know the the pandemic, as I call it. <laughs> but uh, you know, I think bands should have taken advantage uh, of the downtime during the pandemic, and that's just me personally. I think it was an even playing field for all these young bands who should have took advantage of it. And I don't care if it was getting your stuff out there via Spotify or YouTube or whatever, Twitch. Get it out there. I mean, should, do you think they should have taken advantage of that as well? Oh yeah, yeah. If you can, absolutely. I mean, I, I wish, I wish we could have taken advantage of, but you know, that's on me and my slow songwriting. It happens, man. You know, but when you look back on it, though, it's worth it. Yeah, I think so too. So, how's the fans' feedback being on the release of these new singles, "Onward We Toil" and "The Edge of, of a Knife"? Man, and what's that feedback that you're seeing it that still grabs your attention for you all? Oh, it, feedback has been great. I mean. You're never going to get 100%. I mean, usually maybe if you're a very young band and you're demo stage and you're playing it for 20 of your buddies and they're all going to love it. Once you get past that, you're, you're never going to hit 100%. Um, 80 is always good for us to hear from people and magazines and reviews, you know, 80% positive. And we've seen that on a couple albums. And uh, yeah, I, I think we're up around 84, 85% on this one. What led you guys to create a concept album this time around? Was it tied to the Jag Panzer comic book that was released in 2002? Did that have any influence on this? Well, actually, we did the comic after we had finished the album. We had finished the demo of the album, and uh, everybody, we have this private chat room. We just talk every day, in it, and uh, everybody was asking our singer, hey, what's going on in this song? What's going on in the story? What? And he was just explaining it every day. And so we thought, well, you know, maybe people would like to uh, to read about it in a comic. And uh, I priced comics, and it was shocking how expensive it is to do a comic. And, but when you think about it, you know, you've got to pay an artist to do all that art. You've got to get it printed. But I got out a spreadsheet and plugged some numbers in and, and said, you know, if we do this comic, 
we could probably sell 600 without any issue. And if we sell all 600, we can break even. So uh, that's good. So let's do it. So then we, uh, we decided to do that. But the original idea to do a concept album, we had, we had done a concept album once before, Thane at the Throne about Macbeth. And it was cool because we approached the writing almost like we were doing a movie soundtrack. We just approached it very differently. And I actually really enjoyed it. it it's not something I'd want to do every record, but it, it was cool. So we talked about it and we said, well, let's uh, let's do another concept album, except this time let's come up with our own story. Are we going to be seeing another comic book down the road from Jag Panzer or no? Probably not. Um, it's a ton. I mean, I, I'm very proud of the comic and it was fun to do. Man, it's a lot of work. I mean, oh. really just color spaces and bleed on the paper and it makes sure all your layout and it is and that all fell on me and that was I, I wildly underestimated the amount of work it was i thought man i could knock this out overnight no three weeks later i was just knocking it out um yeah i don't think we'll do another one i, I you know i don't want to say definitely no but I, I don't see it happening i i'm a musician i'm not really in the comic business Look, I know we went through the pandemic and everything, but do you feel this new album had to come out swinging for the band since it's been six years since the, the last release from you guys? Yeah, absolutely. We Yeah, I thought we had to come out swinging and, you know, signing with Atomic Fire is a big step. Yeah, I got some huge bands on the label. I got Meshuga and Halloween and Udo. And so, yeah, we, we had to, to come out swinging and, Thankfully, we got a great response from the label from day one, right when they heard the record. So they've they've been doing some great promotion. It's the best I've ever seen for us. What's that nucleus, though, Mark, that keeps you guys moving right along and still creating Jag Panzer's music? Oh, we just like doing it. I mean, we uh, we just love it. I mean, you know, uh, the travel's nice. You know, getting a check once in a while is nice. I mean, and, you know, playing from a big crowd is nice, but really it all boils down to, we just love doing this. We're just really into doing this. What led the track onward? We toil to be the first song released off this album. What was it about that one that said, yeah, let's put this one out first. Cause I know there's other probably on this concept album that could have been the first one to go out, but what led this one to go? 100% record company decision. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. We decided, you know, we had a band meeting and we said, you know, whatever they pick, they can come out with, but we didn't want the last song or the first two because so many bands I know, the lead off single is the first song on the album. So we just, we told them, no, that's off the table. Neither one of the first two, you can't pick that. And you can't pick the finale. Otherwise, pick whatever you want. So they picked the songs and the order. Is it a collaborative effort for you guys, or does one person usually just take the lead for songwriting in the band? 100% collaborative effort. I I deliver an initial song. I mean, everything. Uh, I won't write lyrics, but I'll, I'll have some ideas for vocal melodies. I'll have some ideas for drum parts and bass parts, and I'll work out and deliver everything. But what I delivered versus what gets on the album is quite different. I mean, everybody is everybody chips in and uh, everybody's expected to chip in you know they're more than welcome we've had band members like make suggestions to other people's parts you know you know like our bass player john's just a phenomenal musician he was always calling me up hey what about the guitar part this way or what about maybe picking it a little different yeah, we, we love that kind of stuff. You know, there's no ego, no no attitude from anybody. Hey, man, it's my song. No, nothing. Yeah. Everybody knows that it's a Jag Panzer song, and everybody plays on it, and everybody gets credit on it. So, yeah, everybody chips in. Even our, you know, our new lead guitar player, he, he started with some leads, and they were great. And I said, okay, well, I, I want to hear what you can do behind the vocals. I want to hear some different melodies. I want to hear some new harmony parts. And, yeah, he jumped right in, did all of them. It was great. So having that new guitar player, man, does that light a fire under you too with your playing? Does he bring something new to this band that's, that might have been missing possibly? Oh, absolutely. Every time we get a new player, I have to uh, <laughs> I have to bring my chops up. The, our lead guitar players are always, you know, 10 levels better players than me, but it, it really inspires me to to work harder just, just to keep up. And I, I like having that attitude. Does a full-length album suit? your music better than an ep at this time you think 
Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I, I know some bands have done great EPs, but yeah, that's that's just not us. We just really, I, I think we have too many ideas that would fit on an EP. And, uh, you know, even on this album, uh, most of the, a lot of the songs are quite different from one another. So, yeah, I think an EP would not uh, give a good picture. I don't know, man. Sometimes EPs feel like to me they're just songs that 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 were meant to go on a full length album, but they just lost the direction. Or it's like, let's just, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, oh, I've, yeah, I've known bands that have done that. Yeah, <laughs> breaks my heart. I'm like, four songs. I waited six years for four songs. <laughs> <laughs> was there a track mark for the album that totally ended up sounding different than what it was intended to when it was first brought to the table? Was there one that kept changing or no? Oh yeah, the the uh, last rights, the last song on the album. We were back and forth. I mean, arguing for seven weeks on that song, and it was uh, it was it was good arguments. You know, we nobody took it personally, and we'd all still remain <laughs> friends. But they were pretty intense arguments with everybody. No, it can't go that way. No, I hate the way we're doing this. No, change this for seven weeks until we finally got something that everybody truly loved and everybody had input all over that song but yeah that was it was very different from what i first delivered but that's what you want in a band yeah. man you, you want bandmates that's going to stand up and say hey look i don't like this I mean, yeah you know, exactly i mean because you're wasting your time if if you just put something out there and be like yeah we're done Get yeah it. you know and the, the guys in my band are accomplished musicians and they they're heavy metal fans since they were little kids. So yeah. I want, we want their input on every song. Would you say that's, that, that, that's been the most uh, heated discussion the band's had in a long time? Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I'd, I'd send out a version of the song and I'd get, I'd open up my email. This part sucks. I hate the bridge and <laughs> you know, from all different people. And I'd say, you know, well, what suggestion you got for the bridge? Well, I don't have anything. Okay, well, maybe not speak up till you have an alternate idea. <laughs> yeah, it was stuff like that every day. But, man, it, it really, I love this song now. It really came out good. That's like saying you hate this car because you buy a sports car and the other guy can't afford it. I hate your car. Why? I don't know. I just hate it. <laughs> yeah, I just hate it. <laughs> I know these are your babies, man. I know these songs start telling a story about uh, an individual, but any track standing up more to you than any right now on this album? Yeah. You know, the last song is my favorite. I like the song dark descent because it's uh, if you listen to it, it sounds like a, a basic up temple metal song, which is what I want people to get out of it. But if you were, as a musician to start transcribing it, there's all kinds of wacky stuff going on on that song, but nothing you can really hear. I mean, we're just not that kind of band we're, we're to do that kind, but it's there and it's uh, working on that song. I had every engineer that we worked on it at some point turned around the chair and said, explain this, what's going on here. So that's special. Um, the song pray is special to me because uh you know, Harry had called me and said he wanted a, the song is about the Panthers in the story. So you have to have a Panther theme and yeah, nobody was liking anything I was coming up with. And uh, so I started thinking for these Panthers, what if we did something musically that we just don't ever do? So um, I came up with a riff that had a four accent, uh, which is similar to like uh, the runaways cherry bomb has four accent. Or if you like punk, uh, Asian Orange, Bloodstain has a four accents. But we, we really don't ever do that. So, uh, But we did it for that song, and we made it still sound like us. So, you know, it's kind of a special song. And that song is actually coming out. in. Uh, we spent the most money on a music video for that song, but the record company is releasing it the day of the tour. So that's about three weeks out where that gets released. Dude, thank you so much for mentioning Agent Orange Bloodstains. That song is so <laughs> underrated. Oh, God. Thank it's you, a man. Great song. You're damn right it is. Agent Orange is a badass punk band. Yeah. <laughs> God. They got, oh, dude. Uh, I remember when I was in high school, and me and my buddies, we loved metal and everything. But, you know, you, after so long, you're like, we need something more something else to give some more spice and we just started getting into punk music and here comes freaking agent orange and bloodstains like, oh my god what a wake-up call i mean that 
It's good, 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 good stuff. Glad you mentioned that. Thank you so much. I'm going to ask you this too, man. Okay. Since being a guitarist and being around for a long time, I know a lot of bands straight away from guitar solos, and it made me sick because I'm used to hearing guitar solos. What about now? Do you think it's coming back even more now, more prevalent in music guitar solos? Yeah, I'm hearing a little more, and I, I definitely like to hear it in metal. I think it's an integral part of metal. It's, it's a you know, really exciting musical selection when somebody, you know, has a great lead. I mean, I love it. If I hear a great lead on a song, I mean, I'll just rewind the song, move the needle back and just hear that solo over and over again. It's like every love ballad in the eighties. I had to have that kick-ass guitar solo in it. Oh yeah. And those, those guys had great solos, you know, Richie Sambora and Warren D. Martini and any songs that did not make this album, we could see on another album EP or just maybe a standalone single down the road from you guys. Uh, nope. I throw away everything I don't use. I, I know it drives oh. a couple of my bandmates crazy, but, uh, yeah, I just, to me, which I mean, maybe it's really weird that I do that. I don't know, but that's what I do. If I'm working on a record and uh, something for whatever reason doesn't make it, it's gone for good. I know the album track listing placement was important for this because it's a concept album. But yeah. is the track, but is the track listing placement important for Jack Panzer's albums or EPs that you guys released? Is it important or no? Yeah, it is for us because we. Um, we want the music to have a flow and we, we want the, the music to take you on a journey of, of, you know, a little bit different styles of metal and a little bit different things going on. If you, if you look at this album, the first song compared to the last are wildly different. I mean, just different instrumentation, tempo key. I mean, just wildly different. So yeah, song is actually very important to us. I know this band has been around for a very long time. And, and like I said earlier, it's been interchangeable with, with, with members and everything, but what's the growth musically Mark you've seen from yourselves working on this concept album that impresses you the most, if anything, man, what's, is, is there anything that came out of this band during this album that strikes you that, well, I didn't know that was there for us. Yeah. I mean, I knew my band members were good, excellent musicians, but I mean, they were the, the breadth, the breadth of their, uh, you know, ability to do different things on their instrument just shocked me. I mean, our bass player would come up with three or four completely different bass lines for songs. Harry would come up with alternate harmony vocals just on the spot. Our drummer, completely different beats, Ken, different things. I mean, and these guys were just doing it on the spot, just like asking, hey, can you play a completely different drum part to this? Oh, like this or like this? I mean, it was fantastic. So we're going to talk about this awesome cover art and the layout because this is beautiful, man. The cover art was crafted by Dasan Markovic, who's worked with Angel Witch, Virgin Steel, and then before longtime underground metal artist Travis Smith, who's worked with Megadeth, Opeth, Overkill, was brought in to do the layout. How was working with these gentlemen, and did they get exactly what you all were looking for? Oh, yeah, they exceeded expectations. I mean... I grew up as a kid having posters of uh, you know, Frank Frazetta and Boris Vallejo, this fantasy art. And and when I saw Dusan Markovic's album, because he did our, our previous album as well, I just fell in love with his artwork. And, he, and yeah, he's a really cool guy, too. He, he lives in Serbia, and I, I just love his art. So I was excited for him to do this. When we were talking to him about the cover, we said, you know, there's like uh, a group of people in the story and a group of animals, but... They aren't really a group. They're just together for survival. So we didn't want to show all of them. So we just uh, picked one character and one animal, and they are not any more important than anyone else. But we just wanted to show just two of them on the cover. So he, uh, yeah, Dusan just did a phenomenal job on the cover. And um, Travis Smith is a genius artist. We've worked with him on other covers before, and it's, it's great. We already had a guy do the cover and I'm just like, oh man, how could we get Travis involved? And, you know, I, I don't know. I, I was a little leery to ask him because I didn't want to say, you know, you didn't do this cover because he's a brilliant cover artist, but can you do the layout? But oh, I was super cool about it. He said, oh yeah, I'll do the layout for you guys. And he actually cleared some time for us to do it. I mean, it was great. So it was, it was cool working with a couple really genius artists. 
do you feel like it's getting harder to create a set list for you guys? Uh, and also, is there any songs that's not been played live yet that you want to get in the live set possibly from older albums? Yeah, I'm banned from doing the set list because my bandmates pointed out that I tend to pick songs that I like. But I'm not, I swear I'm not doing it on purpose. So, uh, yeah, they, they do the set list now without me. I did, in fact, I got my email this morning. Here's the set list. And I'm looking at it. Ah, yeah, this is pretty good. I would have done this differently or, or done this differently. But, no, it's cool. They put some effort into it. Yeah, they, in fact, they added several songs that we haven't played. There's a couple we've never played live and some we haven't played for 20 years. So, and then a good helping of the new album. So it's a good set list. So was this your revenge to say, I don't like it. This sucks. <laughs> No, I just said it's good. <laughs> oh, man. We're going to throw Jack Panzer out the window on this question because I, okay. I want to know this is just strictly about you, man, about your favorite taste of music because I know everybody's okay. got their own different tastes and I like seeing this. But if you could write an album, Mark, equivalent to your favorite band's album, which album would that be? Oh, if I could write something like Peter Gabriel, so, I mean, that would just be, or any one of the Kate Bush albums. I mean, any, I just love her whole career. Yeah, it would probably be one of those two. I mean, that would just be incredible. What's been your most memorable show that the band has been a part of that you still cannot believe that Jag Panzer was a part of? Was there one that took your breath away that you still can't believe, or, or, or is that coming up possibly? Yeah, we were playing in, in Dortmund, Germany years ago, and it was a great packed gig and everybody's, I mean, it's the kind of gig you dream about. And we finished the last chord and were immediately pushed into cars and drove six hours to a recording session and had to record a song for the Dio tribute. Oh. I mean, that was just crazy. I mean, there was not a second break. Hit the chord, throw your guitar in the case, in the car, six hour drive studios ready for you i mean it was it was very memorable and insane <laughs> see folks that's a metal moment right there yeah. that, that's one of them old school stories that's awesome <laughs> all right man if you could be a member in an iconic band and play one of their <laughs> legendary shows mark which which uh which band would it be and what show would it be oh easy question dropkick murphy's oh. um yeah i i i just i love the dropkick murphy's <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I love Iron Maiden and Judas Priest, but it would be weird for me to be in another metal band because I'm the chief songwriter in Jag Panzer, and I most certainly would not be in their band. So that would be odd. Um, Dropkick Murphys, I, I think I could nail the parts pretty well, and I love the band. And yeah, that, that, that would be my pick. Okay, I got to ask you this. I'm a Dropkick Murphys fan as well. I'm a huge Dropkick Murphys. Did you get to see the two streams that they did during the pandemic? No, I didn't see them, but we're, we're, they're playing Bakken the same night we are. So I'm really oh. looking forward. And they're also playing here in my town in September when I get back off a tour. So yeah, I'm excited for both things. They played freaking Fenway Park all yeah, by themselves. I, I was like, oh my God, this is yeah, epic. All right, Mark, how can folks stay in touch with Jag Panzer by this new album, everything under the sun for Jag Panzer? How can they do that, sir? Yeah, the official Jag Panzer page on Facebook is always monitored by a band member. So that's probably the easiest way to reach out to us. And before I let you go, would you care to do a promo for my show? Absolutely. Hi, this is Mark Brighty from Jag Panzer, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Everybody stick around. We've got some great, great stuff coming up. And you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour. This is your number one source. And please go out and check out Jack Panzer. Pick up their new concept album entitled The Hallowed. You won't be disappointed. That's on via Atomic Fire Records. So, Mark, thank you so much for doing this interview, man. And I oh, wish thank you, guys you. That was cool. always, always nothing but the best of luck, my friend. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. To Bud's Mayhem Hour. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.